Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the supercharged CL175 build. Uh, we're getting deep into the fuel injection process at this point. We're kind of getting down to the last little bits. The last video, we got the crank angle sensor mounted and our crank angle trigger and a bunch of other little changes. In this video, I'm gonna talk through the ECU I chose, uh, setting up the wiring harness and hopefully getting this thing plugged into the laptop and see if we can do some function checks on some things. All right, so what everybody is probably interested in is the ECU I'm going with. So this is a micro squirt ECU. Uh, I ordered it from DIY Autotune. There's a few ECUs I had kind of had my eye on, well, two mainly. This one and the fuel tech, I think it's the 405. And the reason I ended up just going with this one is due to cost. It was just so much cheaper to do this. I, I don't remember what I paid out the door, maybe $350 with the eight foot harness. Um, but it was just kind of an e easy decision at that point. The nice thing about the fuel tech is it's built has a dash built into it so you wouldn't have to mess with the dash if you went with the fuel tech but i believe it's like a thousand dollars and uh, you still gotta get the harness and everything else like that so anyways i picked up the micro squirt and like i said the eight foot harness you could probably get away with a three foot harness for a bike but i wanted the extra bit of wire in case i screwed something up and really it wasn't that much more expensive so Here's our little ECU, it's tiny, which is perfect for this bike. And here is the harness. I know it looks like a freaking mess, but it's actually complete. The last thing I have to do is actually loom it so it looks clean, but I don't wanna do that until I know that it works and everything connects fine. Um, so yeah, this started out as an eight foot harness um, and it's whittled down into this. Uh, so And I have a bunch of extra wire, which is great if I need to fix anything. But it really wasn't that bad. But I'll get into more of how I did that in a second. Um, so the micro squirt. Another benefit of the micro squirt is the documentation that comes with it. The user setup document uh, or the hardware setup document that comes with it is just extensive. It walks you through everything you'll need depending. And really, no matter what your application is, so that was the biggest turn on for me is um, I was able to read through that before I bought it and I could kind of go line by line and figure out exactly what I needed and it would tell you what works well with it, um, just a bunch of different things. And the main thing I really liked about it was it gives you an example wiring diagram that I was able to use almost to a T to do this wiring harness. So this is actually the wiring diagram, the example one they give you. Um, to be able to set up uh, your application. And I literally, I followed this almost to a T, like I said. There's just a few things I don't use, so I omitted them. So what I did was I took what they had, just for my own sanity, I made a little color-coded wiring diagram. Now, I know this looks like something McCall Kevin McAllister put together to ward off the robbers in Home Alone, but this helped me immensely. And really, once you get this laid out, which again, isn't much different from that, uh, it's just a matter of cutting and connecting wires until you kind of run out of things to connect. I know that is oversimplifying it a little bit, but it's, it's really not that bad if, if you were wanting to do something like this. The main thing is just getting everything mounted on your bike or car initially and then connecting it up. In my experience, the hardest part was just finding spots to put everything. Uh, like I've said again, in, or like I've said in previous videos, that's by far the hardest thing for me. So let me talk about a few of the new things I put on the bike and then uh, we'll start installing our wiring harness. Okay, a couple new things since the last video. So our ignition coils are off of a Chevy 5.3 truck engine. Uh, just like any L LS swap in the world. So these are really cheap and easy to find. So I just welded a plate onto the side and bolted them up. There's one on this side and obviously one right here on the other side. 
And then my plug wires are just custom made by a gentleman. Uh, um, company is Tons Performance. Uh, he, I gave him dimensions and he got them to me within like two days. It was perfect. So those are our coils. What else did we add? Oh, relays, just standard automotive relays. And we have one for the fuel pump, one for the main. Our map sensor is also off a of GM, uh, three bar map sensor. We installed a new wideband sensor. If you guys remember, the last wideband sensor I was using was a buddy of mine's uh, just for testing. So I went ahead and picked up my own. This is an AEM X series. And down below, I welded in a new bong. It's some crazy fancy bong that came with it. Um, I initially had <coughs> the ports up here, but um, it was pretty critical in the instructions to keep them at least 18 inches down stream of the exhaust port. And that one's only about eight at most. So just welded in another one and tucked it up underneath. Actually worked out pretty well. Oh, and the last little thing we added is our actual little fuel fuse box. So ignition, oxygen sensor, fuel pump, and injectors. I think that's the last of the new stuff I've installed on the bike. One thing I did forget to mention was we have a cylinder head temperature sensor here. Uh, I got this off of a site that sells parts for VWs, for air-cooled VWs. So they just take a GM sensor and modify it so you can bolt it to uh, your cylinder head because obviously we don't have coolant, so uh, that will read cylinder head temperature. So now I can start talking about, sorry if I'm jumping all over the place. I've done a lot and a lot of it was off camera just because it's just easier to do, especially the wiring. I didn't want to screw anything up or forget anything. So we'll talk about this little sub assembly here. Okay, so I made this the other day. I needed a spot to a, put the ECU primarily, put the ECU, uh, and then also mount the battery and the regulator rectifier that I showed you in the last video. I originally had the battery and the tail of the bike. Um, it's just taken too much space, up too much space. It was made out of steel, it was too heavy. I just hated it. So I went ahead and made this. So this, the backside here, is what our ECU will mount to. Again, I did this off camera. I might have filmed a little bit of it, but it's no different from what I've done before. Just a lot of measuring, cutting, welding, repeat. And again, space on this bike is it's hard to come by, so I kind of have to make use of everything that I have. Um, so then our battery, I'll just slide into this little slot. A little battery, I guess you call it hold down, just a piece of aluminum angle that's on the bottom here. So on the front here, we will mount our regulator and rectifier. So that that little sub assembly. I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. All you have to do to get it off is disconnect the battery, unplug uh, your regular rectifier, and unplug your ECU, and this comes right off the bike in a little uh, package. So we'll get this installed and then we'll move on to the next thing. So this just mounts up where I believe the horn used to mount up. So the holes are already there, the mounting points were already there. So, I made it kind of easy. Okay, yep, so it just mounts right up underneath there. Um, the, I checked for clearance, the forks bottom out before that regulator would hit. So now, I think we can go ahead and install our harness.
Okay, so far so good. I have batteries actually hooked up for the first time. Regulator rectifiers hooked up. I'm not worried about that. We're not going to start it right now. I think everything's plugged in. I should probably do a double check. Yep, I think everything looks good. So, I believe it's time to actually plug this 55-year-old bike into a laptop, which is just so wild to think about. Okay, I got my computer connected up to the bike. Now, <clears throat> moment of truth, well, not really moment of truth, but I'm going to click the kill switch to on. Oh, shit, is it already on? Oh, it is already on. Never mind. We'll click detect. Hopefully it detects the ECU. Oh, duh. I'm an idiot. The other kill, the lanyard kill is not in. All right. I was like, oh, I screwed something up already. Okay, so that's in. So now, I was wondering why the fuel pump didn't kick on. I figured it would. Let's try this again. All right. Three, two, one. Oh, shit. Fuel pump primed. It's Fuel pump's really quiet. All right. Now, all right. Wide band Fahrenheit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm curious. So does throttle position work if I move the throttle? Oh. <laughs> Obviously it needs to be calibrated, but coolant temp. So that should read ambient. What's it in the garage? 59 up by the ceiling, but that's where the heat is. So that should, that's about right. All right, I need to mess with this. All right, so the last thing I wanna do in this video is just make sure, just do a systems check that make sure everything is uh, working the way it should. So first thing is throttle position. I already calibrated it, so we should go from zero to 100. Yeah. So that seems to be working well. Uh, next thing, let's see, we'll do fuel pump, even though we already heard that. So let me just go over here, turn the fuel pump on. Cool. Turn that off. All right, next thing, we'll test the coils. Um, in my setup, everything runs through the fuel pump relay, so the fuel pump's not on. Nothing else is gonna work really. So so I don't have to hear the fuel pump the whole time. I'm gonna pull that fuse while we do this test. This one. So we'll turn the fuel pump back on and we'll test the coils. So I just heard the relay. So let's try the coils. Cool, you can definitely hear them. I pulled out one of the plugs so we, we can actually see if it's sparking. So let's try this again. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. All right, so now let's try the injectors. Make sure our fuel pump is on. Now these are going to be real hard to hear. They are definitely firing. You can hear them. There's no way you're gonna be able to hear that on camera, but they are definitely firing. You can see it's sending the pulses there. So we'll stop that. Turn off our fuel pump. I should be able to pull up a real-time display of everything. Cool. Here's our manifold air temp, so our intake air temp. It says it's 59, so that seems to be working. Coolant temp, 57. Air fuel ratio is reading, so that's good. Battery volts, need to charge battery. Oh, map sensor's working, awesome. 
right around 100 kPa, which makes sense for ambient. Cool. So the last thing I want to check is our crank signal, kind of the most important thing. So let me get you put in the tripod. So all I'm going to do is take the drill and put it on the hex that's coming off the crankshaft that we installed a couple videos ago. And we're just going to run this at a constant RPM, as constant as, that, as my drill can get. And we're just going to make sure that we have something that resembles a halfway decent uh, trigger. So let me get this two flogger started. And I'll start turning the engine over. Yes, that looks pretty damn good, actually. There's slight variations down here, just I think due to the drill, but once the bike's running, that should even out. But that's exactly what we're looking for. Every, it should be, so it's a 24 minus two teeth, so about every 22 pulses, we should have a long pulse. And that's exactly what we have, so. So I think this is a recipe, uh, for success. I think it's actually going to work. So in the next video, hopefully we're going to get it started. I got a lot of stuff to do on the computer to get the tune, at least in the ballpark so we can start it. I'm a novice at this tuning stuff with the computer. Typically it's carburetors and ignition points. And I, underst I understand all that stuff pretty well, but this is definitely new to me. So, but uh, I think we're well on our way. I appreciate you guys watching. Um, but until next time, have a good one.